that uh, we're making sure that the the vehicle is uh, is ready for people to get close to it and make sure that it's ready to go back to the barn and complete its maintenance before that's, the next flight. That's true. We do have a tradition here where we like to take a picture 10, with the booster. Feet. The team does after our uh, flight. We have reacquired a picture of the capsule. There it is, going through some clouds. Yeah, that's gonna make for a fun experience Capsules for astronauts. Deployment confirmed. Drogues confirmed. The drogues pull out the main parachutes. Capsule main parachute deployment confirmed. And there you have it. Beautiful All three parachutes. reefing, looking beautiful against confirmed. a cloudy Capsule West Texas good. sky. Capsule landing zone is within expected range limits. I love those drone shots. Now, while the parachutes are essential in providing a gentle touchdown, it is also, we also have a retro thrust system on the base of the capsule, which will make the final touchdown even smoother. You'll expect to see capsule a little poof of dust as we land. Feet. That is all very, very normal. That's right. It slows the capsule to about one mile per hour just before it lands in the West Texas desert. Just about to reach a thousand feet. Look how green that West Texas desert yeah. is. It must have been raining there recently. I was just about to say. Nine and a half TDS minutes into enabled. flight. Wow. That looks like a, a new cover photo to me. Beautiful. So pretty. What a day to fly, too. Getting a little audio from our astronauts. Stand by touchdown. Stand by touchdown. Capsule touchdown. And we have a touchdown. Welcome back, Space Nomad. Auto safing start. Welcome home in S36. Always incredible to see a great, easy touchdown for our new Shepard crew capsule. Now our capsule recovery team is currently en route to meet the, uh, the astronauts in the capsule. They're going to safe the capsule and get ready to open that hatch. Now, safing the capsule essentially means they're making sure everything is good to go, that the parachutes are uh, safe and no one's going to trip over anything, making sure everything is electrically grounded and so forth. So things to do with the capsule and uh, CM7 will arrive shortly as well to check on everyone inside the vehicle. And on top of all that, we get to hear from the astronauts themselves here in just a little while. So stick around. Uh, this is not the end of the show. Not at all. Now, some of the individuals that you will see on the ground helping our crew egress from the capsule, as you mentioned, Alice, are our CM7s, a.k.a. crew member 7s. Yeah, let's break that down. So the crew that flies to space and back, as we just saw, is a crew of six. And CM7, or crew member 7, acts as a pair of virtual crew members who are right there with the astronauts from the moment they arrive in Texas through the entire two days of flight training all the way until the moment they enter and exit the crew capsule. Now for this flight, our CM7s are Sarah Knights and Laura Stiles. The CM7s are embedded in the mission and then they're their first to greet the crew once they return to Earth. So let's take a look at these impressive individuals, our crew member 7s. Command engine start, two. Crew member 7 is a very unique role at Blue Origin. <laughs> and traveling to space is an incredibly life-changing experience. Oh my goodness. You want somebody who's guiding you through it that doesn't just understand the technical side of the rocket and the launch operation, but also has the soft skills to